The easiest way to talk about euthanasia is to ask people, do you agree with doctors giving lethal injections to people with the primary intention of killing that person? That is clearly euthanasia. One of the things that's happened is that the pro-euthanasia people have been looking for uh, instances in medical practice where they argue that it's, those practices are euthanasia, therefore they say we're already, or doctors are already doing euthanasia, therefore it's just an incremental step to legalize it and allow lethal injections. There's a difference in kind, not degree, between giving pain relief treatment that is reasonably necessary to relieve the person's pain and suffering, and that's given with a primary intention of relieving that pain and suffering, that is not euthanasia, as compared with doing something with the primary intention of killing the person. Um, and the, this idea that I hear frequently put around in Australia, that lots of doctors are committing euthanasia, and usually it's connected with this idea they're doing it through pain relief treatment. I, that is, uh, as far as I know, that is simply not true. Um, that when you ask doctors, they they will tell you they don't know of instances of euthanasia. Uh, probably there are a few people who, a few doctors who've done this. Um, but then some people have always broken the law. Uh, but I'm certain that it's not a widespread practice, and it's something that I think should be strictly prohibited if if that's what's being done. After all. Euthanasia is sort of a, a softer word, but under our criminal code, it's murder. So what you, as it stands at present, so what you're really asking is, do you think it's fine if doctors are murdering people, uh, and you know we're not doing anything about it? Uh, but I think the reality is that they're not doing that. That they're really what they're doing is proper medical practice of pain relief treatment. And what we also know is that pain relief treatment properly given by people who know what they're doing rarely, if ever, causes death. In fact, some of the research shows that pain relief treatment in prolongs life because the person is not using their resources to try to struggle with the pain. In our societies in the past, we largely had a shared religion, more or less, and in our kinds, in our sort of Western societies, that was a Judeo-Christian shared religion. And that re religion carried our values about respect for life. And in fact, you could add to that respect for death. In our postmodern, secular, uh, multicultural, democratic societies, we've no longer got that shared values based through religion. And two of the most important institutions through which we find our shared values in our postmodern societies are law and medicine. So those, paradoxically, in a non-religious society, they have to much more strongly carry the value of respect for life, both for each of us as individuals and for human life as a whole, and both in terms of our own individual values and our shared societal values. And it's what, what euthanasia involves is changing the law. Instead of saying we don't kill each other, which is what we've got at the moment, it says, well, we don't usually kill each other, but sometimes we will. So that necessarily uh, hinders law's ability to carry this value of respect for life. And similarly, we, if we legalize euthanasia, most people think that it should be doctors who carry it out. And so that necessarily hinders the institution of medicine's ability to carry the value of respect for life and each doctors and nurses and everybody else who's involved in the healthcare situation. What you can say is that law and medicine and society itself, because society controls law and medicine, become complicit in putting people to death or helping them to kill themselves. And so um, I look at that not just in terms of what would be its immediate impact on the value of respect for life, but how would, I mean, the question I often ask people to consider is, how do you want your great-great-grandchildren to die? Where will that go in the future? And from everything we know from the countries that have already legalized euthanasia, what we do is we start an unstoppable expansion of the justifications for euthanasia. The Netherlands went from saying you had to be competent adult, 
uh, consenting, terrible pain and suffering, you've tried everything to relieve it, and you've given your informed consent, to now they've got euthanasia of babies. Disabled babies are being euthanized. Children can be euthanized. So, you know, it's, what we can see is that there's that unstoppable expansion, and that's enormously dangerous. And we also have to say, I think, I think we're failing in our societies to look to what we can call um, human memory, or the other word for that is history and tradition. And for thousands of years, we've said this is a bad idea. And suddenly, you know, we think we're the new generation of the enlightened, and we think, oh, well, why not? You know, it seems easy, it's straightforward. Why would you worry about it? And a lot of people say, oh, if you're anti-euthanasia, that's just because you're religious. Well, what my work is about is showing that there are very strong secular reasons not to legalize euthanasia. You don't have to be religious at all to think it's a really bad idea, both for society and for individuals. What I find interesting in Australia is that certainly among the strongest proponents of legalizing euthanasia, at the political level at least, uh, are the Greens. And uh, when we look at our physical environment, I think the Greens have done a great job of making us all very much more aware that what we do is not neutral in terms of our uh, physical ecosystem, what we use often just call our environment, and uh, that you know it can have very harmful effects. And they've also emphasised that we've got obligations to future generations to hold our environment on trust for them so that they're no worse off than we are, that we don't leave them with a destitute environment. And what I think is also true is that we have a metaphysical environment. That is the collection of values, principles, attitudes, myths in the good sense of not lies, but myths are ways that we talk about things that can't be objectively described. So it's about our values and what we treasure and what we want to hand on to future generations and beliefs and whatever, uh, traditions, culture, all of that f forms what we call the societal cultural paradigm. And what I've been arguing is that that's our metaphysical or sort of above the physical ecosystem. And just as we have our uh, physical ecosystem and that things that we can do even with good intentions can seriously harm that and we can leave that system damaged in such a way that the future generations inherit something that's very uh, less, much less than what we inherited. We didn't hold it in trust for them. Likewise, we can uh, damage our metaphysical ecosystem, this collection of values, principles, attitudes, beliefs, myths, uh, culture, tradition, that we have to hold uh, safe to pass on to future generations. So that we're, and I think that euthanasia is a central issue in that, that this, uh, this be belief and principle and value, the positive expression of it is respect for life. And I would call it profound respect for human life in particular. But actually, I believe it has to be respect for all life with special emphasis on respect for human life. That if we don't keep a respect for all life, we won't be able to keep respect for human life. And of course, what that requires is not the same between what respect for all life requires is not identical to what respect for human life requires. And in a way, what the Greens have done is made us aware of having respect for the physical life and the physical environment around us. And I, what I'm trying to do is to see, get people to see that likewise they can damage this metaphysical ecosystem and that that also has to be held on trust for future generations. Uh, we've, for thousands of years, we've prohibited people from killing each other. In fact, the research shows that we've got natural moral intuition and inhibitions against killing each other. And I think we need not to breach those, not to reprogram people that it's okay to do that. And even though you're doing it for compassionate motives and you think you're doing something good, uh, it's still what you're doing, and that's extremely dangerous.